Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can answer questions on the poetry anthology, uh, which might be the power and conflict anthology, or love and relationships, because I'm going to show you a structure you can use to actually answer these questions in the most effective possible way. Now, remember that the thing about these questions is that they will be comparative. So they will ask you how both poets present a certain theme. Now, there aren't that many themes they can choose from. It could be the effects of war, it could be power, uh, for love and relationships, it could be romantic love, it could be childhood growing up, or relationships between children and adults. But a theme is just a big idea that a writer's got an opinion about, a poet's got a message. They want to show you about that theme. So, the structure that I recommend using is called Peter, but... We're going to add in another ET into this, making it Peteta, because we need to write about both poems, okay? So, P is point, E and T are evidence and technique, and you do that twice, once for each poem. And then the other E is explanation, and then we have the reader. So, the reason that I do this is so that in the technique part, you actually zoom into a technique, or it could just be a word if you can't find a special technique that the poets use and explain the effect it has on a reader. Because often that bit is difficult. If you just use something like peel um, or PEE, -E, then it's not very clear how you actually do the explanation part. You need to know the step by step process. And the most important thing there is zooming into the language. And then we have the R. This is very important as well. It ensures you connect it back to the reader, explain the overall impact, and then you zoom back out again in your analysis at the end. It's also essential to include that. So your point is just going to be a simple statement, an opinion that shows you understood the poem, and it should be comparative. So your point should actually relate to both poems and compare them and say how they are similar or different. So, for example, if you looked at these two examples, um, so we have Remains and Bayonet Charge, you might say that Remains presents war as incredibly painful and traumatising for innocent victims, while a Bayonet Charge shows even more that it also traumatises the soldiers involved in the fighting. Right? That would be a point that you could make. It's a comparative point that relates to a uh, theme. Then you have the evidence, okay? So the evidence is a quote, but it's actually better to use a, a several shorter quotes. So a cluster, that's called, of shorter quotes that relate to the same theme, because it shows you can connect together different parts of the text. The technique is then the method that was used. Now, if you can't find the method, that's okay. So you don't have to look for fancy methods, complicated things like iambic pentameter or whatever. You don't really get marks for that. What you get marks for is actually just explaining why the writer used a certain kind of word or technique. So even if you don't find a complex technique, just mention the type of word, the verb or the noun or whatever, and you get marks for that if you explain it well. In fact, you don't lose any marks for doing that. Okay, then you do the same thing again for the second poem, Evidence and Technique. And then the explanation part, we try to add layers of meaning. So try to say two or three things. It could be two different points of view. It could be two things that fit together about that quote and about the word that you're zooming into. Try to show your personal opinion. And ideally, this bit is comparative. It relates to both the poems. So you're explaining the effect that both of them now have on the reader. After you've analysed each one individually, you're now explaining the effect of both. Finally, the reader part. Now, a great... Um, structure to use for the reader is very simple. It is the reader may feel dot 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 something sad, depressed, miserable about the thing in the poem because so you give a feeling, you give a topic for that feeling because our feelings relate to things and you give a reason and that's a specific statement about the reader. The more exact you make it the better. So you might say the reader may feel depressed at how traumatised the soldier is in bayonet charge because of how he's given up on all of his values and lost any faith in the reason he's fighting the war. Okay, so you can also, if you're comparing, which you should be here, you could say, whereas in poem A, or while in poem A, 
and then you would put a comma in poem B, and then you do the same thing. You repeat the same thing again. So that's how you turn it into a comparative statement to make it even more effective. You need comparison throughout, and that's why in the Peter structure I recommend making the point comparison. So the point is going to be is similarity or difference, and then the ER at the end, that's going to be comparative again as well. Okay, so I hope that helps with answering questions on the poetry anthology. And remember, if you like this video, just press the, press the like button, hit subscribe. I've got more videos on other areas of English and other topics to help you out with your exams. So just uh, check out my, my content in the future and hopefully I will see you soon. Bye.